We're getting out the extension cords, and I want to bring out long ones. I don't really want to test the extension cords right now. Uh, I have ran these off of 16 gauge cords before, but yeah, I think I got a 12 and a 10 here. They might both be 10s, I'm not sure. But none of this stuff is supposed to run off of long extension cords. It's just that I like doing that because it shows what you can do. And I've done it before. So we have sort of a continuation of what I was getting at before with the yes welder. And I didn't know if it would just burn up totally right away when we tried it before. That was the uh, 125DS, obviously, that we got packaged here and some adapters. And uh, the reason why I did not buy the same one this next time, and this one had already been opened up. This is the 205. I couldn't remember what it was. 205DS. I hadn't turned it on, but we had... Uh, open the box and I was yeah. for some reason I was thinking it had the bigger dens it looks like it is still the small dens no it's not no this is a real small dens on these that is the bigger dens yeah because <clears throat> I don't have cables made up for paralleling those. And that's where I believe the real beauty in these small welders, whether it's the dragster or a yes welder or what it is, the real beauty is not how you can go into a garage and you can, uh, yeah, you can go into your garage that's welded up, set up with a welder plug. You can go into your kitchen area, tap off of your range hook plug, your dryer plug, that limits you. If you can set this up where you can run it off of a couple of 110 volt cords and be able to do actual industrial welding, that to me is the beauty of these and that's what I've done over the years with the dragsters at times. And I was stumbled onto the yes welders because the dragsters are no longer available quickly and these yes welders are just so inexpensive like I say, the first one here, we gave it a pretty good try and we didn't burn it up, you know? It, it proved to be pretty good. We even made it parallel and play games with the dragster, which you really should do your paralleling with match weld, matched welders. Coming back to why I went with the 205 though instead of the 125. I went with the 205, it still runs on 110, it still is the same basic class of welder and it was actually cheaper when I bought it because they no longer offered free shipping. When I bought the 125, Amazon was giving free shipping initially, and then uh, they cut out the free shipping to Alaska, and I had to jump up a size to get the free shipping, so the 205 was actually cheaper for me. I wanted to buy just one more of the 125s and show what they would do, um, but buying two of the 205s, which the price between them is not much different when you go to buy them, even if you are somewhere else where you still get the free shipping. And I need to get another Howie's knife. So this is the way this one came from Amazon. The other one was the same way. I would have just left it totally in the box so we could start from ground zero, but one of my guys opened up the outer box and that was fine um, he didn't know any different and then I figured well since it was open I'd take a little bit of a look at it this is just the way it's boxed up and we have our instructions that tell us not to hurt ourselves some welding leads and another welder. The wire brush that they give you is pretty much worthless. Um, at least it's not as much of an insult as what I've seen from some of these little cheap welders where they give you a welding hood per se of sorts. And uh, yeah, that's really a not thing.
So I'm going to start right off with these and get right to the main point of what I'm looking at with these. We may try some uh, not really destructive testing, but hard use testing later. But initially, I just want to set this up where we can have some serious welding. And that means that we probably want to get the extreme flammables further away. We want to be able to do a little bit of serious welding and see what we can do with two of those in parallel on 110 volt. On the dragsters, I have been able to run 532 rod with two of those on 110 volt in parallel. Now, to do that takes a minimum of a 20 amp breaker. And we got the same. Huh. They gave us a 15 amp plug. I don't remember if the other one had a 15 amp plug. Yeah, it does. Yeah, I would have expected it to be a 20 amp plug, but because they claim on the other one that it draws up to 33 amps. You do want to make sure when you're using your 110 welders that they're on two different breakers. If you have adequate wiring in your building, they can be on the same leg, that won't matter. But they need to be on two different breakers, because if you're running on the same breaker, you're just not going to get enough power through. And in fact, I know how this is wired here. Instead of, uh, I think they were independent all the way down the wall. I know they are, but I also know those two, two that are on one receptacle I wired for alternate, uh, alternate legs of power. Not worrying about our adapters. Again, we're going to have more flammables. And we're going to make a kind of a crude adapter this time to be able to use the two welders together. If a person's using this like you would for uh, really setting up for going in the field and doing stuff, you'd make up a nice paralleling cable like I had for my other one over here. Uh, yeah, no, I put it away, put it up on the shelf with my dragsters, that orange paralleling cable that I had out in the other video. Unfortunately, since this one here, they put the bigger dins, which is a better connector, but they put the bigger dins on there, I don't have a paralleling cable made up for that. So just for kicks. It's playing turning on switches on to see if they blow the breakers or go away. Okay, they liked being on. That's a good point. Sometimes things just don't work like they're supposed to. And we are going to want to run reverse polarity. So reverse polarity means that our work is going to be negative. And one of the ways many years ago a friend of mine had to remember that, which is reverse, which is straight. And straight, of course, you, it's whether you're thinking conventional, electrical, or whether you're thinking uh, electron theory. And most people in schools have been taught electron theory, so we'll go by that. With electron theory, the electrons is what we say are moving. So if the electrons are moving, if you're on and the, the negative is the electrons. Electrons are negatively charged. That's, that's their denomination, is the negative charge. So if the electron is the part that's moving on straight polarity, we would have our stinger, and our stinger would be on negative. And that is the electrons going straight into your work. So that means that it's straight polarity. The opposite of that is reverse polarity. The reason for the different polarities, well, of course, since it's DC and you can have one or the other, but having 
the, um, the polarity with the electrons going into your work means that approximately 70% of your heat is going into your work. It will produce more heat where the electrons strike than where they leave from. So that leaves your uh, rod with, <clears throat> with a lesser portion of the heat. Where when we run reverse polarity, which is what we're gonna do, that gives you more of a fast freezing situation. You're not putting as much heat into your part. Most of it is being used to melt the rod and generally gives you better control. Uh, if you're on dirty material, if you're doing a plug weld, uh, and then it's a matter of what the rod calls for you to use, but a lot of times you don't always have to do what they say. Um, but the polarity will make a difference on the penetration, how far it melts into the metal. So we need a Phillips screwdriver. I just want to be able to see what my frame is. Yeah, no, I think that's great. I don't, I don't know how else we can do it. By the way, this is Bert over here on the other side of the camera that you're not looking at. He is my newest employee, and he is going to be working with putting up some videos on YouTube. I started putting some up years ago, but uh, just doing everything by yourself, it doesn't get done. And Bert has volunteered to do this. He's a little new to both the field. We're going to try and teach him some machining. And that's because he wanted to learn, plus we probably can't afford enough to keep him doing nothing but video uh, <laughs> videos. Um, so that's where that's at. So you're going to run both those cables into one? Yeah, I'm going to just run them into one stinger and hook it up instead of the other ones. I made an actual adapter where I had little cables that had the plugs and then it went into a connector for a standard welder and you can put on whatever type of lead you wanted from there after they're both hooked together okay but this is the quickest way to get at what we're trying to do today and i have multiple welders and stuff other than uh, the buying these for the posterity and showing them to other people i really had no need for these particular welders here in the shop and as we bert and i have talked we're planning on doing a real construction project if if these work out like i think they will doing a real construction project with these two little welders off of 110 volt out of my house so instead of using my high amperage plugs um, we'll probably even go to a 16 gauge cord just to see what we can do and we will do some kind of a real industrial project probably outside in the snow yet this year and we haven't figured out what that project is though because i don't want to just weld some plates together i can do that here to show you what the welding's about with these machines but we'd like to show that you could set up a business and not even spend 500 dollars on supplies you could set up a business be a portable welding outfit and do things that are phenomenal just with some pretty basic tools these days so while technology can be a bummer at times when it's not open source and things go wrong, but uh, there's also some pretty cool things out there. And I don't worry about where it's made anymore. I just worry about is it a good thing and can I get it? Um, and yeah, these are made in China. The dragsters were made in China when they quit uh, having them readily available too. Initially they were made in Japan. Uh, they all seem to work about the same. Uh, let me see where I was going. Oh yeah, anyway, we don't know what the project is yet. Uh, suggestion was made of a flatbed, suggestion of a trailer, suggestion of a snowplow. Those are all bigger. While I wanna do a project that's real, I don't wanna commit myself to a week or two of doing stuff outside just for the fun. Let's just be brave. I don't think it'll do it. I think it'll run 3 sixteenths without too much trouble, but uh, let's just see for kicks if we can grab a quarter inch rod and run it. That's a little insane for a couple little welders on 110, but hey, if it works, it works. Okay, up all the way, up all the way, 
They're claiming 140 ish amps each, 280 that should actually run. But I don't know that on the 110 they will put out that much power. There we go. Nice long medium size rods. There are times when those can be used, but not every day. Not what you're going to do running off of your house current. Um, it's going to be somewhere a little better plug-ins. Okay, now you're, yeah, it's going to flash. The camera might not be happy. You don't want to, probably want to stand back just a little bit anyway for possible splatter. And you don't want to look at the well. Yeah. Duh, John John Boo Boo. If you don't install the grounds to the machine, you can't fault the machine. No, no, you kind of have to. Uh, actually, that's the hot lead, I think. That I'm, yeah, the plastic hot lead. The grounds I had installed before. Yes. <clears throat> okay. I hadn't installed those because I wasn't sure what I was doing for an adapter as we rattled through this. But it's cold it's not happy that's uh, about the same as uh, about the same as what you have with the uh, Xena welders which I've used when you're running them with 316s not kind of a cute thing too I didn't think to bring a chipping hammer here because I wasn't really trying to show any beauty of the welds but you can see it's a little bit ropey but you could use it if you were stuck with quarter inch it wouldn't be my choice settings on the dial I'd have to turn it down but the way it was running I don't know that I need to turn it down it was pretty cool And I could try running the machines on 220 and see what they would do parallel together. But in reality, if you're going to hook up to 220, just buy a machine that's big enough for what you want to do. Whether it's a yes welder, a no welder, some other brand, I don't care. It just, uh, it makes more sense. The beauty of this is for what we can do on the 110 cords. starting and a little bit spattery 
it was not as smooth of a weld as what I really would like. My ideal for these machines really is not the 532 anyway, but uh, you know, let's try it, play with it. Okay, there we got it shorted. And amperage seems to claim the same on the dial must be according to what they think the setting is. It's not really heating the rod up a whole lot, so... Oh, I didn't have it shorted. It actually had quit some other reason. Yeah, a little pretty good hole into there. It's got some power, but the voltage, the voltage is a little low on that. Let's go to 8 inch, which is really what I figure the volume in these machines is for running 8 inch, because 8 inch is an excellent rod for just all around uh, welding. I say that, well, you may need smaller rods to do uh, some kind of work because of the delicacy of what you're welding on But the eighth inch rod doesn't flex a whole lot. You can use multiple passes and build something up I, I like bigger rod for bigger projects doing things out in the shop, but again, you're, you're at least on an industrial scale and uh, It's readily available Okay, it started good and we are a little hot, which is what we would figure. So I think these probably lie a little bit. Eh, let's turn them both down to 100. You should try and, when paralleling, you should use a welder that is pretty much the same and try and balance your settings. It's just gonna be less abusive to the welder that you're gonna abuse. And you shouldn't burn your cords on your work, even if you feel like it's fun. No, that's too cold. So these do not put out, at arc voltage, they do not put out what they claim. Doesn't mean that they're not valuable, usable. They're just not putting out the amperage they claim. That's welding pretty smooth there. Not a terrible startup, but just for kicks, let's turn one of them off. Yep, not happy at all. Okay, let's turn the other one off. Well, not happy. Let's try turning this up all the way. Yep, it can, it can weld, you can make it go, but it's just like the quarter inch, it's just cold. Well, I'm going to grab some other steel and we'll try an actual well. I don't want to work at all. We'll turn it over here. We'll do the phone. Something that I'd like to do also 
besides showing what could be done on this, is do a little bit of a quick introductory welding tube, uh, introductory tube stick welding later on. works they play okay to get together I uh, wasn't able to get them tripped out let's just try one other thing but part of what's happening is as they get at that trip out they're uh, they're lessening the voltage where you can weld but it's just not a pleasant one so in that effect they're not putting out as much power if you're trying to use too much so there's a little bit of a pre-protection there. But even though the quarter inch didn't run well, I'm gonna try it all the way up, running the quarter inch for a while. And let's just see if we can get it to trip out. Okay, well, it seems to do the job. There's quite a bit of heat, actually, that we got out on that quarter-inch rod. Um, voltage is just a little low to be happy. It's functional. Um, I'd rather run the 3 16ths or the 8th. The 8th ran beautiful at the lower setting. And that's pretty much it as far as these ones at this point. Should leave them on to let them cool off a little bit. On the other hand, I'm not that concerned about them. If they're going to die from being abused, I'd just as soon them die with me. I can afford it better than maybe some other people. And uh, we'll keep checking them out. I might even buy two more of them to see if it is possible to do a quarter inch on a reasonable basis. Um, my idea many years ago when the inverters first came out was to start up a little welding manufacturing company, but I have lots of ideas that uh, just take more than what my capital has ever been. And my idea was to have basic little inverter welders that you could parallel together, have them all come back to the same control, and they could be plasma, they could be uh, TIG, they could be any kind of a unit that you wanted, and the idea is that you were just buying the output units, and they'd all be the same. So you'd plug them into your cords and get uh, whatever you wanted out of it. If you started out, you could buy a 100 amp welder. Tomorrow you buy a 200 amp, another one. Now you have a 200, you buy a third one, you have a 300 amp welder. You wouldn't have to go back and start over with what you were doing. But uh, welders are relatively cheap today and I think that that would be a non-market even if a person did start it today. Back when a 400 amp welder was going to cost you $4,000 and $4,000 was several more ounces of gold than it is today. Um, it had some potential. But uh, anyway, there was something else that I was thinking of. Oh, yes. Why stick welding? 
Why stick welding? Why not wire feed welding? Anybody can do it wire feed welding. Yes, anybody can do a crappy job of wire feed welding. Um, wire feed can be also beautiful. The normal thing, and, and some wire feed welding is pretty difficult, but the normal thing that people start out with is a thing called short arc wire feed, where your wire comes out of your machine, it's shielded strictly by gas, there's no flux to get in the way, and it shorts out in the puddle, makes a little weld puddle, shorts out again, welds, and it does that automatically as the voltage changes, forcing the wire into the puddle. Uh, it's great for out of position. All you have to know is where you is to be able to see where you want the metal to go. It's like applying toothpaste. But if the metal gets very thick, then it doesn't make a good penetration. It doesn't connect well with the base metal. It's pretty much limited to quarter inch or thinner. So uh, I, and I first found this out when I welded together a big jig using one inch plate and I took it over the press and it went plink and everything exploded and fell off. Then some of the other guys told me how stupid I was for trying it. Um, but I hadn't really mastered stick welding at that point. I, I had welded on the farm uh, for stick, making gates, different things, but I hadn't mastered the stick welding. Now, uh, there's also wire feed that uses flux. The advantage to that is that the flux helps your puddle to flow out, makes a cleaner weld. But the thing with the stick rod that the stick has over other stuff, once you really get into it, is when you first strike your arc, your arc comes between your metal and your part that you're welding on, and the flux is right there around it, shielding it right from the start. You don't have a time, as in some of the other welding methods, where the flux has to find its way to the outside. That initial being able to do that, you can do that when there's wind. Um, there's just a lot of things that you can do. Also, if you're welding on, you have to weld up a hydraulic cylinder that's an old one. You have to weld up a hole for a bushing. If it's all pretty metal, we bored it out to where everything's perfect, we can even use our bore welder and things to make a nice automatic weld. But if you have nasties that are left in there, there's parts of an old bearing that are smushed into the bore. There's parts of oil that just didn't get out of it. Things that you don't know about. Uh, weird magnetics. Um, by the time you find out about it with wire feed, a lot of times you've got an hour's grinding to take it out your uh, bad metal that's all bubbled up. Where with the stick, you can just change your penetration into the part a little bit and control it and uh, get rid of it before it's a major problem. And that's enough for today.